coming in. So it's uh, rest day for us on the ride, and uh, um, we're joined by um, what I would call an incredibly extraordinary human. Uh, and I can see you looking uncomfortable with that already. Fred Wallace, uh, uh, you're doing something which is hard to comprehend, but the story needs to be shared. Tell us what you're doing to start with. Uh, thanks, Peter. I'm probably, yes, a little bit uh, comfortable with that. I'm just an ordinary boy for the birds. Right. Um, I'm supporting the hands group. Uh, I feel very strongly about the hands group. Uh, I'm supporting the hands group by raising money by undertaking something a little bit different. So each year, while Hands does their annual bike ride, and this year's a bit special because it's the 10th anniversary, I have done the bike ride previously, and this year I elected to run it. Uh, it's different. It takes it to another level. Uh, it certainly challenges me, but I'm hoping that also really challenges and makes a really good connection with a large network of friends and family that I've got uh, and encourages them, perhaps even inspires them, but most importantly, gets them to understand the work we're trying to do and encourage them to donate to support the great work done by the Hands Group. So what you said is that you're, uh, you're running uh, mm. what you've previously ridden mm. and uh, uh, what's the distance? So I'm doing the same distance as the bike riders, Peter. 800 kilometres. Uh, you're running 800 kilometres. Yes. And uh, how long are you taking to do this? I'm doing this in eight days. And we're trying to be really <laughs> faithful to the bike route. So what the bike riders do each day, where they start from, where yeah. they finish, we do the same. I want to, I want to be, try to be true to that as much as I can. Every now and then, yeah, there'll be a little hiccup with something, but generically we're trying to stay true to that distance. So it's a lot of work. Uh, thankfully the distances vary each day. So on some days it's a little bit less, and on some days it's a little bit harder. Um, and we had one of those days yesterday where it's, a, where it's the, I think the biggest day for kilometres and uh, yes, that one hurt, so uh, um, it's a long way. How far was yesterday, Greg? Uh, now you're testing me out. I remember yesterday was either 128, 124. The days are now starting to blur. Yeah. Um, yesterday, tomorrow is slightly less at 112. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get through the 128 yesterday. We got well over 90. Uh, the heat in the middle of the day beat me, but um, we're really trying to get through the same kilometres as the bike riders each day, so around on average 100 kilometres per day. I think it's a, it's a feat that um, I didn't appreciate, I don't think, in the gravity until I was over here and saw you running. Mm. And um, uh, I do this ride each year and I get home and, and sometimes you just forget what it's like being out on the road and the heat and the distance. And, and I've said to many people, for me, the, uh, the significance and the challenge that you're facing just came crashing down for me when I'm, I was riding and I just think about what you're undertaking. It's, um, it's an incredibly extraordinary thing, isn't it, to, to run uh, the distances that you're running. And I know that you're very yeah. humble and modest, but th th there's, you, you have to acknowledge you're in a select uh, group of people who could even attempt this, isn't it? Uh, I suppose yes and no. Um, I don't certainly don't think of it that way, Peter. Uh, when in well, doing do this sort of stuff, Greg, that uh, anyone watching this yeah. uh, might be on my side on yes, this and I not do. yours. I certainly do, and a lot of people struggle to comprehend it, yeah. and can't get their head around it. Um, no matter what you do, there's always somebody who goes further, faster, yeah. more extreme, and I'm okay with that. Um, this is not about trying to set world speed records or yeah. run the furthest you can. I'm trying to do something and which delivers some good to the world and that's what it's about most important mm. uh, yes it is hard to the hard part is backing up each day yeah so yes i can run 90 a day uh one or two days but to do it consecutively end on end takes a lot out of the body it's a lot of organization and a lot of support from the support crew and, and really they as a team help me achieve this uh, yeah it's a big it is a big effort but again for me personally while you're talking about the ride and seeing me there, I'm looking around the countryside. Um, I'm making sure I'm not just looking at pavement, I'm not just looking at bitumen. You do that, but I'm looking around the trees, I'm looking at the fishing villages, I'm looking at the ordinary Thai people and what they yeah. do. There's the people who are living at almost subsistence level, yet yeah, also then the wealth mm. of other people here and seeing them in, uh, and I'm seeing and experiencing 
the diversity of Thailand and it's fantastic. I'm really enjoying it, seeing some beautiful things. You mentioned your support crew and uh, uh, predominantly it's made up by your family. How um, special is it to have um, Julie, your wife and, and the, the three kids here with you? Not, not just along for the ride, but <laughs> they are your support crew, aren't they? Mm. It's great. Look, it's fantastic, and uh, we've just come from a bite to eat, and to see the conversation, the special experience it creates is uh, is really wonderful. And that's a great thing. Yes, they have very specialist roles, and Julie's pretty well kept me going physically, mm. uh, and I'm taking care of medical and physio type sides. Uh, they're taking care of social media sides for me. They're mm. keeping stats on what I'm eating, what I'm consuming, mm. so that I know when I'm on track. I need to eat more, drink less, all those sorts of things making sure I know the route ahead, which way I'm going. They all have set roles and they've all adapted and shaped those a little bit over the last few days. Uh, mm. It is a fantastic experience, but I hope for them it enriches them and they get a lot out of it, not just because they help their dad, but more importantly, they got to see diversity, they got to learn about more about teamwork, selflessness, and again, that we're doing something really, really good out of this. I'm also lucky I've got uh, two uh, good friends who are also participating and are very selflessly also giving up their time, which is also their time from their family, uh, their holiday time to support this, uh, and I'm really grateful of it. Um, so far, they're having a good time, they're working well as a team, but we're four in with four to go, uh, and it will be a very, the intent is to get to the end. Yeah. Uh, it really is, and that will be a, a special moment for so, for so many ways. And again, that's where our attention is to turn, not just that we've done something, but we've done it for where we are arriving. When we arrive um, at Bantham and Chai, that's what this has been about. So it's really important for me to make sure we turn our attention from the work we've been doing very quite inwardly to very openly and outwardly, this is what this work is for. I think, Greg, it takes... Um, um, I can only imagine the physical preparation, but... Um, the, the, the where you must get yourself in a headspace. Yeah. Uh, just uh, you know, yesterday we saw you. You were out at uh, like five a.m. or something, and got into the hotel close to ten o'clock at night. And what goes through your mind, or uh, how do you remain um, committed enough to keep cooking up your feet and putting them back down on the tarmac? Uh, maybe I'm just stubborn, Pete. I've done a lot of events and a lot of it comes from that, uh, I believe, which is, it's, it's so important to be in a good frame of mind. And that's why you have to be looking around at the trees, looking around at the great countryside, looking at the people, uh, talking about your experiences for the bike, supporting you and riding close with me. Um, so that headspace, because if I'm not in a good headspace, that's when it's, it's too hard, it's too hot, all those sorts of things. So it's important to be in good spirits, uh, to try and have fun while you're doing it. That takes a little bit of your, time, uh, your mind away from it, but it's that mental strength which you get from having done this so many times before. And it's an uh, analogy I use with the kids is, you know, I can be out in an event, it's 2 a.m. in the morning and blue mountains, it's pouring rain, you're in mud, uh, it's freezing cold and you go to say, uh, it doesn't get much better than this. You know? This is really good, it's really special. So you have to take, approach it in such an openly warm manner. And even yesterday, we were making jokes all about, thank thank God we're doing this in winter. Yeah. You know, and we're yeah. boiling, we're yeah, cooking on yeah. the roads. We're, that's how it is. Greg, it's, um, it's had a big impact um, on the group. Um, personally, it's had a huge impact on me. Uh, watching what you're doing, uh, being seeing you come in of an afternoon in the in different conditions, you know, like there's been a, uh, a state of um, uh, relaxed mm -hmm. state, there's been a distressed state, and it's, um, it, it's had a profound impact on all of us here who have witnessed and being part of it, in, uh, just as an observer. You're four days in, four days to go, what are your thoughts? this point in time? Uh, uh, on a couple of fronts, physically I feel great. Uh, I do, my legs feel really, really good. Mentally, I feel really good. My feet are giving me grief and that's what's worrying me a bit because 
It means you start to change the way you run and your shape yeah. and it can create other challenges from that. Other than that, um, I feel really good. It's And again, on the, even day two, um, I thought it was pretty good all day. My family thought I was rubbish and they were actually quite worried about me through dehydration and uh, even my cognitive thought. Um, I thought I was fine, but that's another matter. And so it's important for me to be in good shape. There are still days to go, and this is about grinding it through. So the next couple of days, we've got hard distances on highway, and we'll just cope with what we've got. Um, and there'll just be a lot of grimacing on the way, but that's how, you, how it goes. Huh? Finish line. Yeah. Four days time. Yeah. Whatever time of day you get there. Yeah. What's that going to be like? Uh, there'll be a couple. There'll be a couple of things. I'll probably double back a little bit to the riders. I'm really humbled and grateful for the welcomes by the riders. It's been important to me that this is. They're doing a really good experience and doing something great as well. I'd, and I don't want to take away from that or make this something bigger than that. It's not. They've got an experience. I want to make sure that. Um, I'm adding to it from that perspective. Um, coming in, I think there'll be a lot of tears. I cry a lot at the end of the events anyway. I think there'll be a lot of tears well before I get there. There'll be a lot of satisfaction, but that will, for me, will stem from A, we've raised money, two, we're seeing where that money goes, and that we've had a good team environment. We've actually had a great time together as a crew and team. I'm working on a project and the project is to raise money to help the children here in Thailand and now we're seeing where that occurs. So for me, again, I talked about turning from the outward, or sorry, the inward family or the support crew and team to here's where the work goes and that's going to be pretty big. And then I think I just want to go sit in the, I just want to go sit in the corner. You're an extraordinary man, Greg Wallace, and uh, I feel a, a, a deep sense of privilege to uh, watch this journey, to call you a friend, and uh, um, and to see what you're doing with such uh, humility. And uh, um, if ever I was going to ask people to put their hand in their pocket, it would be to do so now in recognition of what you're doing. And they can do that through the Hands Group uh, website. and. Uh, Mate, I uh, won't take up any more of your time tonight because it's, uh, I feel guilty that uh, um, you're not resting or doing something to prepare yourself for tomorrow, yeah. but it's, it's been a, um, a humbling experience and a, a deep privilege to watch you. Uh, thank you for what you've done uh, for Hands, uh, for the Thai children, and uh, um, an extraordinary human. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, Peter.